So we'll continue with the next topic that is reaction of metal oxides with acids. Let us see how the metal oxides can react with acids and what is the color change taking place and what is the mechanism involved here. Actually, if you take one example, you take cupric oxide, which is a solid. If it is added with the HCl, aqueous concentrated, it gives cupric chloride plus H2O liquid, H2O liquid. So what you are noticing here is, once the cupric chloride is formed, aqueous, this is intense blue, why the, why the uh, formation of cupric chloride, why the formation of cupric chloride, we are able to understand that, you are finding that there is a color change, the cupric oxide solid, once the reaction is completed with HCl, this cupric oxide, here cupric oxide means this copper contains an oxidation state of plus 2. Here also the copper is having an oxidation state of plus 2. But mind you this is oxide metal and this is, this is a metal salt. So metal chloride. In metal chloride, again copper, it is in the plus two oxygen state. This is a Roman numerical. It's a Roman numerical. So the intense blue color formation in the cupric chloride is because the copper is existing in the plus two oxidation state. Intense blue color. That means there is a color change whenever the metal oxides are going to react with acid. After the formation of salts, always you find that there is a color change. The color change is because of the because of the change in the nature of the given compound. We are starting the reaction with metal oxide. After the reaction is completed, that metal oxide is converted to metal chloride. So in metal chloride, metal chloride can ionize faster than metal oxide because you are finding that here the chloride gives chloride ions and copper is going to give cupric ions. And because of the ionic formation of the copper in the plus 2 state in the ionic state, and when copper is in the plus 2 state, it has unpaired electrons in it, in its orbital. If you write the electronic configuration of copper, it contains unpaired electrons. Any metal cation, particularly it's a transition metal, it, because it contains unpaired electrons in its orbitals, yes, definitely that metal fluoride has a tendency to form, to show the intense blue color formation. Frankly speaking, any metal fluoride, if it is showing the intensity in the color, the intensity in the color formation is also because of the D to D electron transition. D to D electron transition, it is due to D to D electron transition electron transition d to d electron transition of the cupric ion d to d electron transition of the cupric ion this is what you have to keep it in your mind suppose one more example if i give you say i am taking magnesium oxide this is also metal oxide mind you it is treated with H2SO4 aqueous. So what you are finding is, yes, here you are going to get magnesium sulphate plus H2O. Here the color formation is, it can give white precipitate. White precipitate it can give, this is metal oxide. Metal oxide, it is alkaline earth metal. Alkaline earth metal oxide. Usually, alkaline earth metal oxide, they are colorless. That's why we can say that they can give white precipitate. So we will continue our discussion here after studying uh, the topic reaction of metal oxides with acids. Now we are studying about the reaction of non-metal oxides. The reaction of non-metal oxides with bases. We are going to continue the same part of the discussion. In the similar lines, now what we can do is, because we are saying non-metal oxides, say I am giving you one example of non-metal oxide. 
you take carbon dioxide is a non metal carbon dioxide is a non metal oxide and uh, if you take calcium hydroxide it is called slacked lime okay this is metal hydroxide so metal hydroxide slacked lime is a metal hydroxide so here what we are doing is you take slacked lime calcium hydroxide aqueous this is metal hydroxide metal hydroxide okay this is a metal hydroxide metal hydroxide and we can call it as calcium hydroxide calcium hydroxide so therefore now what i am going to do here is actually because because if you are taking non metal oxide so that means non metal oxide is carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is non metal oxide non metal oxide reacts with the base that is calcium hydroxide is a base so base and it is giving calcium carbonate calcium carbonate plus h2o calcium carbonate plus h2o you can find that the total number of oxygens you can find that the total number of oxygens in the reactant side are 2 plus 2 4 so in the product side we have three oxygens plus one oxygen so here this is this calcium hydroxide which you got we can call this as milk of lime or simply this is limestone limestone and this we can call it as the salt that means when a non metal oxide when a non metal oxide reacts with the base it is giving milk of lime limestone that is salt with the liberation of water if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus